So first of all, your one definition is that a secant, sorry, a segment whose endpoints are the center and any point on the circle is called the radius. And you've used radius before, okay? The plural of radius is radii, meaning more than one radius. And so we want to be able to identify a radius or more than one radii in a circle. So when you're looking at this circle, first of all, what is that purple arrow pointing to? The center. That is the center of the circle. It's pointing to a point. Okay? So write center next to your purple arrow. And in parentheses below it, remind yourself that this was a point. Okay, so now we're looking for a radius in the circle. So which of these arrows denote or point to a radius? The red arrow. Does everyone see why? Okay, so the red arrow is pointing to a radius because it goes from the center to an endpoint on the circle. And a radius is a segment. So I'd like you to write below it segment in parentheses. So you remember that it's a segment, not a line. Okay. Our second definition that they gave us was a chord. And a chord is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. Okay. So again, a segment, not a line. It's a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. So can someone tell me which arrow would denote the yellow arrow? So the yellow arrow is pointing to a chord. And again, this is a segment. So remind yourself of that with, right, by writing segment in parentheses beneath it. So it is a segment that connects two endpoints on a circle or two points on a circle. Okay? Our third definition was a diameter. So a diameter is a chord that connects the center of the circle. Okay? This dark blue. So this is a diameter. It's also a chord. But it's a special chord. And it's made of a segment that connects two endpoint or two points on the circle through the center. It has to go through the center. Bless you. And you've worked with a diameter before in math class. Okay? So now we're finished talking about all of the segments. Next we want to talk about a secant. And a secant is a line that intersects a circle in two points. So which line up here intersects the circle in two points? the green. And so we spell secant with an S-E-C-A-N-T. And this is a line, not a segment. So when we are, are talking about it or writing its name, we need to make sure that we use the appropriate symbol on top of it. Okay? Um, the, the symbol for a line, so if this had a, the point A and B, we need to make sure that we call this line a, B, and put the arrowhead on top. We, we did that, absolutely. It's from way back in Chapter 1. Same thing. Yep. And if this was um, circle C, and that's the name of the circle, and this was point D, then we have to make sure that when we name circle C, D, or circle, I'm sorry, ra radius C, D, or radius D, C, that we just use the segment mark on top. Okay. Absolutely. So if this was the point E, then CE, segment CE, would also be a radius. And if we made this point F, then segment CF would also be a radius. So when we ask you to name any and all radii in an activity that we're doing in just a few seconds, radii is just the plural of radius, and that would mean that we would want to name one, two, three radii, because there are three in that circle. Um, radii is R-A-D-I-I. -I. It's the plural of radius. 
um, FE is actually a, the diameter. So yep, we can't we can't call it a radius. Any questions? Okay, keep them coming. All right, so we are down to one more definition that we have to know, at least one more type of set, uh, line that we have to know and be able to identify. And that's called the tangent. Okay, when did we last hear tangent? That word. Last chapter. And I'll explain to you tomorrow, since we're short on time, why we call it tangent. Okay? The tangent is a line in a plane of a circle that intersects the circle in exactly one point. Just one place. So it touches it, it kisses it, and passes on through. Okay? Only touches it in exactly one place. Okay? Kind of a kiss and run. Okay? So which of these arrows denote a tangent? The orange. Okay? So this is a tangent spelled just like it was last chapter. And it is related to the tangent we talked about with opposite and adjacent. Okay? And the place that it touches that circle is called the point of tangency. Okay, so the tangent is a line. We have to remember that we want to use arrowheads on top of it when we name it. And we'll have lots of ways to name tangents. So if we left off at uh, F, so if this was G, and this is a point H, and here's a point I, there are a whole bunch of ways we could name this. We could call it segment H, sorry, line HG or line GH, or line GI, or line IG, or line HI, or line IH, right? So there's about nine different ways that we can, can name this, right? As long as we're using two points and we use the line symbol above it. Yes. Good question. Okay, so are we talking about part of it and calling it a ray, but we defined a tangent as a line, so when we're using our symbolism, we won't use any ray symbols at all. Everything was either a segment or a line. Okay, so far so good? And you could consider, you could also, we're not going to do this for today, but you could also call segment AB a chord. Okay? Because from, say, from A to B is it can be called a segment, right? And that would be a chord if we're only talking about the segment, not the line. All right, make sense? Okay, so we just learned a bunch of vocabulary. We want to apply it. And so I'm going to pause my recording here, and we're going to do a quick activity. And it's called like, it's like a shotgun start in golf. And I'll explain in just a moment. All right, now that we know the different parts of a circle, the different segments of a circle, first of all, what is the name of this circle? Circle A. You name it by its center. And we have a new symbol. It's a little circle with a dot inside of it. That's our symbol for circle. So this is circle A, and DC, segment DC, segment DC is what? A diameter. What's another name that we could use for this one? A chord. It's more specific as a diameter, but it's a chord and a diameter. The circumference of a circle is its distance around. So we take pi times the diameter to find the circumference, and we'll be using that later on. Okay? All right, Cam. Line DF is what? A tangent. So we write down tangent. Okay, and Chris, line BC is what? Now, if it's a line across the top, we have to call it a let 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 Chris answer a secant. Okay, so if it had been a segment BC on top, we would call it a chord, but because it has a line across the top, we have to call it by its name, which is a secant. Okay, and they usually have arrows with the particular program that I use to make these. It doesn't put the arrows on it. 
Okay? And then segment AC is what, Jenny? Segment AC. Okay, take your earbuds out. Okay? So segment AC starts at the center and goes to a point on the circle, so it's a Uh, radius, okay? All right, so everyone has those. We understand these? Okay, we'll take a little mini quiz tomorrow over these terms to make sure we know them, okay? It's okay. They're not hard, okay? If you, if you just read through the notes. Okay, here we go. So, common tangents. So, we can be asked... How many tangents do these circles have in common? Okay, so when we talk about something being in common, if you have something in common with someone else, it's something that you share, right? You both have the same thing, okay? I have um, dark hair in common with Jaden, okay? We both have, have brunette hair, okay? Along with a lot of other of you, okay? So when we're talking about a common tangent, will these two have a common tangent? No, why not? Yeah, any line that I make for a for this inter, this this circle that's inside is going to be a secant for the other circle, isn't it? There are no common tangents here. Or zero common tangents. have nothing in common with tangents where tangents are concerned okay now how about this one okay one common tangent where these two meet or they touch will be our common tangent nope you can just write one because they're just asking what your common tangents okay all right the next one how many common tangents will this one have Okay, it's obvious that we can see this one because we just looked at one like that, right? There's one common tangent. Do we have any others? Absolutely, we could have three. There could be one that goes through here. If I can draw a straight line. And here is another. Does everyone see that we would have three common tangents? Okay, Sam, how many common tan tangents will this one have? Okay, so where would they be? Okay, so there's one. Be careful to touch it in exactly one spot and I touched the board at the same time I was doing that. I like it. Can it be diagonal? Could we have a common tangent that goes like so? And then touch this one at this point, this one at that point of tangency, and then another one that goes through roughly like so. So this one will have four common tangents. Okay. Now, internal versus external tangents. A common internal tangent intersects the segments that joins the centers of two circles. Okay. An internal tangent. Well, this one had no tangents, so we don't have to worry about internal tangents. And this one just had one common external tangent. But notice that if I connect the two centers of this circle, of these two circles, with a segment, do we cross one of our tangents that we just drew? So there is one common internal tangent. and two common external tangents. Okay, so again, we connect the centers. Here's the center of this circle and the center of this one. How many common internal tangents do we have? Two, how many common external? Okay, questions on this one? All right, so here's the next. I know we have three minutes. We're very tight. 
Okay, very tight on time today. Okay, so here's the most important things, guys, the, as far as math is concerned. When you have a point of tangency, a, the, a segment going from the center to that point of tangency, a radius, is going to be perpendicular to that tangent line. Okay, so here's how it works. We talked about whether things were right, obtuse, or acute triangles. Okay, for them to be right triangles, we knew that a squared plus b squared had to be equal to c squared, right? So we could check to see, does 24 squared plus 44 squared equal 51 squared? Okay, if so, we would say, yes, this is a tangent. So this is nothing new as far as mathematically is concerned from what we did on what we did yesterday or last chapter okay now here's what's different okay when they tell you that p is a point of tangency then that means that this leg squared plus this leg squared has to be equal to our whole hypotenuse squared And here's what you will need to FOIL out. Okay? Remember FOIL? First, outsides, insides, last. Okay? So you're going to take R plus 24 times R plus 24 and find out what 36 squared is. Okay? So this is calculator, big time. You don't want to be multiplying these out by hand. It takes too long. So r squared plus 1296 will be equal to r squared, outsides gives us 24r, insides gets us 24r, and last times last gets us 24 squared, which is 576. Okay, I know we're tight on time here. These guys go away if we subtract r squared from both sides. And now we're down to solving 1296 equals 48R plus 576. So try them. You can do them. They're not that hard. Okay? All right. See you tomorrow.